Why does the evolution of the brain hold the key to the future of AI? What's the theory here? So the idea is uh, most of the people that are working on reverse engineering the human brain, I mean, the, the core goal of AI today is to create human-like artificial intelligence. And uh, what we are trying to do is we look in the human brain and we say, how do we recapitulate this uh, thing in our heads? I mean, what's so hard is the human brain is one of the most complex organs in the universe. It has 86 billion neurons, 100 trillion connections. Uh, uh, it's all wired together in a tangled mess. So we have largely failed in the goal of reverse engineering how the, how the brain works. Um, but what's so interesting is if we roll back time, the brain wasn't always so complicated. And so an alternative mechanism to try and understand how the brain works is actually to track the story of how it came to be. Because when it, when it began 600 million years ago, the very first brain, our ancestors, had a very simple wiring. And if we follow the story of how the brain modified itself in response to various ecological challenges, we actually see a relatively coherent series of modifications that have almost a beautiful mapping to existing innovations in AI and missing ones. Um, so what we see is what AI is missing today is breakthrough three and four, these two abilities that emerged first in mammals and then in primates. Um, breakthrough three is simulating. It is the mammalian ability to pause and imagine the world as it is not. We do not have AI systems that do a good job of doing this, and I can get into the details of why. And primates have this ability of mentalizing, which is thinking about their own thinking and the thinking of others. Um, and this is an essential piece of AI safety, um, where we want AI to understand our requests um, and be able to reason about human preferences. And these are also things that are woefully missing from AI. Um, so right now, we're the, the sort of arms race in the field of artificial intelligence is missing steps mm. Um, that evolution took in the roadmap of building human-like intelligence. And I think we uh, do that at our own peril um, because there are still things that a squirrel can do that the smartest AI system still can't do. Just, just, um, just, and those are really important abilities. Just to understand this a little better for me then, Max. So the, you, you say there are the, these five jumps and, and we're, we're missing three and four. So tell me about the, the ones that we do have and how they, how they, how they, uh, how they relate between AI and, and the evolution of the brain. Yep. So breakthrough two emerged in early vertebrates, uh, which were fish-like ancestors about 500 million years ago. Um, and what uh, that was, was reinforcement learning. Um, and we have really powerful, uh, what's called model-free reinforcement algorithms. And by model-free, it means that they make decisions in direct response to stimuli. They don't pause to imagine possible futures before making a choice. Um, there's almost no evidence uh, that fish do this, but they still are quite intelligent. They learn through trial and error. Um, and we have very good algorithms today that do this. So self-driving cars use model-free reinforcement learning algorithms to uh, stay within a lane. Um, uh, we have lots of great model-free reinforcement learning algorithms that have played games really well. So that and there's a beautiful stories of how we've looked into vertebrate brains and we actually have come to understand what dopamine neurons are doing by virtue of connecting it to temporal difference learning algorithms in AI. So there's this like beautiful story of how AI innovations have helped us understand how brains work and brains have uh, corroborated ideas in AI, but that exists. Um, breakthrough five, which is probably unsurprising that ever, uh, evolved in humans is language. Mm -hmm. um, as we've seen with ChatGPT, uh, we have really, really powerful language models um, that clearly understand the notions of grammar, clearly understand the notions of syntax. Um, but the problem is ChatGPT is missing the underlying thinking and the underlying reasoning about other minds. So it's a vacuous uh, language model. It's breakthrough five without three and four. Um, but we have good language models. We have uh, we have uh, reinforcement learning, but we don't have good simulation or mentalizing yet. So the ones you're talking about that we're missing, they're essentially to do with uh, with imagination, which feel a bit like the most uh, the most human thing there is. Do you think we're likely to get there anytime soon? Can we make because because I mean it seems to be that's the there's a really important frontier here that if we can get machines to imagine, they don't feel like they're machines at all anymore. So there's uh, I think there's going to be two steps in this. It's a great question. 
Step one is, uh, can we add the basic concept of planning ahead or thinking about things before you take an action? This is something that's going to come very soon. So uh, the whole drama that's played out in OpenAI, what, if folks are following that, the Q star algorithm that they're working on, this is a lightweight version of thinking about the future. What it's doing is... Uh, instead of ChatGPT directly responding to you, what they're working on is an algorithm where it plays out a few possible uh, reasoning paths and then it evaluates them and then gives you the one that it thinks is most likely. So that is a very simplified recapitulation of these mammalian abilities of planning. But there's a reason why we still don't have uh, robots that can do dishes or even walk up the stairs well. Um, because what planning does in a mammal brain is it does it in what's called continuous action space. So it looks at a infinite number of possible uh, actions it could take and somehow cleverly decides which of the infinite number of possible actions it's going to do. If you watch a squirrel run across tree branches, it doesn't sit there for 30 minutes to plan. It effortlessly plans exactly which branch it's going to run on and has the motor skills to do that without falling. So there's the basic idea of planning at all, which we will have very soon, but there's something special about planning in mammal brains that we do not understand. Its world model inside its head is very rich. You as a human can close your eyes and imagine so many things with such detail. We don't really know how uh, mammal brains are so good at that. And look at these kind of limits you're talking about then. I mean, some people might consider that people who are frightened of the rise of AI, and we can talk in a minute about whether you think they ought to be, people might find those limits quite reassuring. The, 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 you know, the, the, the idea that there are some, as you say, there are some things a squirrel can do. There are ways in which, and this is, I, I appreciate how absurd this sentence sounds, but there are some ways in which a squirrel is more human than an AI is. People might find that quite reassuring. Should they find that reassuring? I don't think... Uh... I'm not sure that it should be reassuring in, in the following sense. The, the problem with the current path in AI is it's very easy to get duped into thinking these things are really smart. Um, so there's a famous effect called the ELIZA effect, where uh, 70 years ago, someone built a chatbot um, that tricked a lot of humans into thinking they were talking to a human. So it passed the famous Turing test to a lot of people. But when people looked under the hood of what ELIZA was doing, it was a very simple trick. It just took the question that the user asked and played it back to them as a therapist would. So if you said, hey, I'm feeling sad today, it would say, why are you feeling sad today? And that's all it did. And a lot of people were like, wow, this must be a human on the other side when they were asked. And so the, the Eliza effect is dangerous because it's very easy to, to miss the underlying um, sort of vacuous nature of the fact that these systems are not have, they don't have a very rich world model. And so if, for example, people start saying, well, ChatGPT seems really smart, I'm going to start using it for medical advice, or uh, ChatGPT seems really smart, I'm going to use it as a lawyer because it's gotten a lot of things right. Um, the issue is that it spontaneously makes very dumb mistakes. And this is because it doesn't have an underlying knowledge base that a mammal brain would, um, i.e. a world model. And so these missing things... Uh, are are good if uh, it prevents us from adopting AI systems, but I'm skeptical that the uh, sort of intellectual uh, gaps that they have are actually going to slow down AI development at all. Mm. Um, so I think the safest path forward is to try and get them as smart as possible, as fast as possible, as opposed to uh, rolling out really dumb or, or surprisingly dumb AI systems in a lot of crucial applications.